nine o'clock and you're still watching Newsfeed with myself and Tlantla Sihume. Thank you for staying with us. Starting here, Northern Cape ANC Chairperson Dr. Zamani Sol says 30 years isn't enough to eradicate the destructive impact of apartheid. In an opinion piece published on Eyewitness News, he further argues that South Africa isn't a miraculous case which is immune to the ills of post-colonial societies. Political analyst Dr. Unga Mantimka joins us right now to unpack some of the remarks. Dr. Mantimka, a pleasure to have you on the program this evening. Now, drawing on the parallels with uh, China's 100-year plan to eradicate the impact of the century of shame, how realistic is it to expect South Africa to eliminate the enduring impact of apartheid colonialism within a time frame of 30 years? Good evening to you and uh, your viewers. So, this is a debate about how we should look at post-apartheid South Africa. A lot of people, especially um, from the liberal or white uh, population, feel that the ANC overemphasizes apartheid. Mm. A lot of black people acknowledge, uh, in fact, even a lot of white academics actually, acknowledge that apartheid is self-reproducing. There's a lot of... Um, books that have been written and research that's been written to prove that. But that is besides the point. I can understand why the ANC or ANC politicians feel like they need to write apologetics as it were in order to position the idea that there should be acknowledgement of apartheid and colonialism in terms of their, the continuing problems that we face in South Africa. However, many people acknowledge that and what they have a problem with and see uh, as a challenge is an ANC that in the last, say, 10, 15 years has proved incapable of being a party that can be trusted any further to lead South Africa towards dealing with our own uh, uh, period of shame. So, so, so it's besides the point uh, as far as South Africans are concerned at the moment mm. as to whether or not we should acknowledge uh, apartheid and colonialism. That's a given. The issue is that from an organizational machinery and the ability to lead the state, the ANC has increasingly shown that morally, politically, and administratively, it can no longer govern South Africa. We look at the ANC's own role in a short while, but let's also highlight a bit of the article that uh, is raised by Dr. Zamani So. He emphasizes the positive developmental strides in China and, and Vietnam, for example, attributing their progress to historical injustices. To what extent can South Africa learn from these models in addressing the socio-economic consequences of the apartheid colonialism? The answer is simple. It's a bold, decisive, patriotic leadership. You're not going to get anything other than that. Mm. By the way, we do have our own uh, successes. We don't need to look at China. I think later on in the article, he does highlight um, some of the great strides that have been made. For example, in terms of increasing the reach of municipal services in drinking water, uh, upgrading of informal settlements. It doesn't mention in his article, in, in his article, but uh, every, uh, everywhere in South Africa, we've seen a lot of what, either what they call in situ development, mm. where informal settlements are upgraded, or greenfields developments, where where people are relocated to new areas. If you go to various metropolitan uh, municipalities throughout the country. There are lots of these uh, developments where integrated human settlements have been delivered. Um, if you look at our progressive taxation system, a lot has been redistributed uh, through that. If you look at electrification and a whole lot of other things that have been done that have succeeded. So this is why I say at issue in the 2024 elections, mm. is, 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 yes, indeed, it is about how the economy, the political economic system is not working. But also there's an indictment on the cap capability of the ANC to continue to lead, uh, to do what is necessary. Its politicians are, are, are showing, at, with every opportunity they get, 
that they have become so inwardly focused, so self-centered, that uh, they have become a liability to that very project of ensuring that the socio-economic transformation. And the, the party is fighting, uh, some politicians within the party have been fighting uh, efforts to build the kind of leadership that is necessary in order to credibly lead this process of socio-economic transformation, which will create a South Africa that is inclusive. Take the issue of land, for example, yeah. which he makes, he, makes, he makes reference to in the article. Um, is a fundi on land uh, redistribution, uh, a, 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 a Professor uh, Ngukaitobi SC, goes to town to show how the inefficiencies in the land administration system uh, have actually failed South Africans. Not the constitution, not the nature of constitution that we have, but poor administration from land commission, land affairs, uh, and, and all that entire value process of ensuring that uh, land is redistributed. So as much as we can continue to acknowledge the role of colonialism and apartheid in uh, creating land inequality, Mm. We, as much as we acknowledge the ANC for uh, the human settlements that have been delivered, we must acknowledge the failures that it has had. We must acknowledge the bungling of the very same, you know, human settlements program through our workmanship, and therefore uh, that creates a need for rectification mm. programs. Let's expand on that point. I mean, are there comparable missteps in South Africa's post-apartheid era that really hinder progress? And how can they be effectively addressed to ensure a sustained development? The biggest one is leadership, uh, in, is, 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 is poor leadership and the loss of a moral compass of a liberation movement that once prided itself uh, as, as, as a, a party that can deliver South Africa, uh, you know, in the, to, to the promised land. And there are great initiatives that are there that cannot be faltered. What compromises these initiatives is not the initiatives themselves. Whether you look at um, also what he points to, increases in literacy, the investments in education, there hasn't been a problem with the allocate the determination of where to spend funds and 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 what budgets to allocate. Those funds have been misspent misdirected and the capabilities to build a state that can deliver on infrastructure for mm -hmm. example uh, infrastructure projects on time and on budget um, those there, there's been failure because the party uh, morphed into something where the the, the 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 state served the party where its politicians are not judged on the basis of uh, excellence in the civil service mm -hmm. rather the processes of attaining ANC office have been captured such that regardless of whether or not a person performs, as long as they control that entire uh, machinery from the branch to the region, to the province and national offices, they are guaranteed to get into power. So unless these, these changes that have been made in recent years to try and bring in a little bit of emphasis on, on, on qualifying criteria for leadership yeah. are going to gain steam, all these efforts are going to, 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 to not succeed because of the failure to ensure that processes of selecting leaders that get to be dis deployed in the state, those processes themselves have got preeminence rather than have elite interests subject processes of electing leaders to their will. As we wrap up our conversation, uh, the mention of corruption as an ongoing setback in South Africa's de de developmental path uh, also raises some concern. How can the country then effectively address corruption to really ensure the proper functioning, or especially of state-owned enterprises, and overall governance? Yeah, so, so, so I mentioned uh, corruption, I mentioned poor leadership. Um, the, we know what needs to be done. 
we've had a system that is controlled by a dominant party and that dominant party is now uh, being punished so that you have a multi-party democracy. Mm. That is not a panacea for our development, but also we need to hold uh, business accountable in South Africa. I think that business also failed the the project of uh, creating a prosperous society. When they sat on the sidelines and 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 had mistrust towards uh, this new administration from the word go, and did all uh, all that they could to have an extractive culture, um, you, you know, relocating, for example, registrations of. Uh, listings uh, to elsewhere, uh, just caring enough to 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 extract resources from South Africa and not uh, developing the country. Uh, South Africa developed out of there was always this issue that to invest here was a challenge because there was a small domestic economy. Now, Sam Peter Blanche talks about South Africa South African capital's propensity for myth making. South Africa, the smallness of the domestic economy of South Africa is not a, a natural issue, is not a natural occurrence. Right. It's an issue of manipulation of who gets to have buying power through discriminatory uh, policies. So if there was significant investment in rural development, uh, a significant investment in manufacturing capabilities, instead of this tendency of exporting our primary products to overseas and then importing them, uh, business could have invested in the country and help create this prosperous economy. So while we, uh, we, 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 uh, we point the weaknesses of the ANC, we should also um, you know, uh, emphasize the extractive behavior of those who have money in South Africa and have been shy to invest in this country to actually have it, may, mm. have it, make, it make it work. But I'm happy that we've seen, we've begun to see now a lot of you know, emphasis on business taking a role uh, as much as we, we, we place emphasis on changing the political system. Concluding this uh, insightful conversation with uh, Dr. Onga Mantinka, who's a political analyst at uh, Nelson Mandela University, and also the intricate discussion surrounding the impact of apartheid colonialism and South Africa's de de developmental journey over the past 30 years has provided some valuable perspectives as well. And the parallels drawn by Dr. Zamani So with uh, China, Vietnam and the United States are also offering a broader context to the challenges and opportunities faced by South Africa.